Tabletop Game Store Stories. Hey TJ, what's the best game store story you have? The cringier, the better. It's always better when it's more cringe. <laughs> yes. My local game store got closed down because the owner fucked 9 and 12 and 13 year old girls. Looks like we're starting strong today, boys. I, I, I was expecting cringe. <laughs> this is a bit more than cringe, to be honest with you. And now the closest one is ours away. There will probably never be another one because nobody wants to be like the Connie monster that ruined it for everyone. I mean, I, like, be honest with you, I don't know if I would want to go to it. I know. Even if the nearest one is miles away. That's ridiculous. I forgot, guys. Let's just keep going. I expect to cringe, not depravity. Game store near my house when I was younger. Guy used to frequent it a lot. We'll call him Jim for now. He was a bit of a spurg and acted like a typical game store autist. Position at the game store opens up and he applies. Gets the job and is a pretty good worker. Store decides to give him keys to the only office in the place and access to their computer so he can do inventory ordering and stuff. He suddenly starts hanging in the office more and more, oftentimes going in there for hours during a shift. Other employee decides to go check it out one day, has a spare key and quietly opens the door. This guy is sitting there dumbfounded with his pants completely fucking off with his cock in his hand, freaks out and runs out of the store. <laughs> they fire him immediately. Don't see him for a while. A couple of years later, go to the game store again after not visiting it for about four years. Dude is in the back of the store just sitting there on a laptop. Ask one of the employees about it and they say he lives with his mum and she refuses to buy internet for some reason so he pretty much spends every single hour the store is open sitting there playing woe. <laughs> Owner of the store apparently changed hands and none of them knew about his previous employment so they tolerate him. I mean like look, guys I, do we really need to do a PSA? Don't be jacked it and work. Yeah, like come on. <laughs> um, well, unless that's your job. But like, <laughs> I, like, there's a very, very few amount of people that require <laughs> to jack it and work, but like um, that's not. I mean, I think we can all agree. Let's all be civilized I think, here. I think we can all agree why his mum refuses to get it. Now, <laughs> I think I think there's no question. Yes, yes. There's no there's no question about what. Oh, I wonder why he doesn't isn't allowed into that. <laughs> huh? I wonder. Hmm. Interesting. Go to your local place to play Pokemon. Kids, teens and adults divisions are separated. Er, is Chris Chan going to show up here? <laughs> I can feel Chris Chan's going to show up here. Using my guardy deck. Go up against the literal autistic guy. He's around 25 or so. Oh my god, it is Chris Chan. No, I was 27 at the time. Chris was playing against kids, like 8 years oh, old. Oh yeah, he was, yeah, he was playing against little children. Yeah. Tries to beat me the best he can. Stack my guardy with energy per what it does. 30 times the amount of energy. Gets it easily to 300 without even trying. Guy can't even keep a Pokemon on the field. Knocks out every Pokemon before he gets a chance. Dude starts to lose it and yells at me. Not fair, not fair, you cheated. No one on. I did not. I played it fair and square. His mum comes around to gather him up. We're leaving, you keep doing this and embarrassing me. Shop owner was bewildered, but Loki expected it. I mean, that's a problem you're going to have to deal with. You know, know. look, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but... Look, there's quite a few of us that are a bit autistic. They're a bit on the spectrum, you know what I mean, guys? Mm. Including yourself. Yeah, including myself. So, like, you know, like, it sometimes leaks out. It all really comes down to if you're self-aware or not yeah. of the situation. Yeah. And within this type of niche culture... Things like this will happen in a game store. Yeah, you're going to kind of expect someone to spark yeah. out. Yeah. There were these two guys, Jason and Chris, that absolutely hated each other. They were both fat retards, but I guess they were too alike to get along. Over the course of their time at the store, they got into multiple verbal altercations over dumb shit. It got to where they would avoid going into the store if the other one was there most of the time. The store owner was a big doofus. He constantly egged them on because he thought it was funny. He'd say, oh, Jason was in here the other day. He said you can't paint your minis for shit. <laughs> Me. That does sound like you are. We should start. Would do something like that. Or, I heard Chris talking about how your EDH deck sucks. That is you, so Megan. That actually is you. You are a proper wee shitster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plus, there's fuck all else today. <laughs> what you used to battle it out. Yeah. <laughs> Put a fiver on who wins. <laughs> It went on for years. The store cleared out some storage space and started having more tables devoted to D&D. And inevitably, Jason and Chris eventually got seated at the same table for a campaign because one girl 
that was a store regular was running a campaign. It was fucking gross. It was a contest to see which one of them could simp for her the hardest. <laughs> they seemed to tolerate one another long enough, until one night, things got heated over one of them cheating in their character build. If I can recall, someone switched out an ability they had with an ability they shouldn't have until a couple of levels later. And the store owner jokingly made a comment about how the DM girl frowned upon cheating. And suddenly Jason and Chris got in a physical altercation. The only part I saw was Chris punching Jason in the throat. <laughs> and, Jason, <laughs> and Jason making this awful walrus sound. I'll never forget that. Years later, guys still talk about the guys that fought over a game of D&D at the store. But it wasn't really about D&D. It was just about two guys that couldn't stand each other. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. I wish there was more of this. I wish I could know more. Yeah. Guys, just don't be simps. <laughs> that's, that's all I really have to say about that one. Just simp for no woman. Yes, and couldn't you, Megan? I'm not simping for you. You wife me? Yeah, I know. You're my wife. That's different. <laughs> Nothing super crazy ever happened in my local game store over the years. But that was likely because I didn't live there and only went after classes to play Warhammer on weekdays and wasn't great friends with most of the people. However, there was a very odd evening one time I was there. Random 30-something comes in one day. Clearly autistic, but I guess he was super interested in learning about any and all of these hobby games so he could make friends. I think he convinced one of the shop guys to take him around the store while we were all in the middle of various games to introduce himself or just watch. Kind of awkward, but harmless. The afternoon turns into evening. He kicks around for a while, asks questions about what we're playing, whatever. Like lots of local game stores, it's not uncommon for people playing into the night to order pizza or Chinese or whatever delivery to the shop for themselves. It's about 9pm. I'm in the middle of a big ass Warhammer game with my nephew and two other guys. Big fucking battle taking up the central table. Some Indian guy comes in, very confused, has a receipt, asks if there's someone he can talk to, tells the shop owner he has a delivery for here, not to anyone specific to the store. We're confused. Shop owner is confused. What is it? It's like $500 worth of Indian food. <laughs> Random autist from earlier apparently decided he wanted to buy Indian food for the entire store. Oh, no. He got, oh, he's that's mean. cute. No, he's really mean. Then. One of the gaming tables turned into an impromptu buffet of random shit. No one knew what it is. But we're all like, all right, I guess. No one knows who this guy is or his name. And to be honest, I never saw him again after that day. That was a night. I really, feel, I, I really feel for he him. He wanted to make friends. Yeah, and he uh, bought everyone spicy bum food. <laughs> oh, no, that's so cute. I really, you know the worst thing is? He probably got too embarrassed after. He probably realised, oh shit, what have I done? And then couldn't go back. Oh, oh that's sad, to be honest with you. My heart, that's cute. I, I hope he does go back. I hope he does go back. That would be really nice. And now, the models of our website. Brought to you by neckbeardia.co.uk. Get you all some of these titties. Dwarf titties or titties, cat titties, fat titties, the gases and waste is the bit. Vampires and goblins and all the buff champions and even hentai, yeah that too. Dragons, manticores, ogres and no sandbox bearers and even more to you go still. Undead and demons and then our friend Pally and definitely not 40k. What else? Dark elves and lizards and Megan the Slither and James the look cool as he stands. Beholders and kobolds and tyrants and only in a donkey with a frying pan. If you don't want no models, then no need to bother. We now have subclasses and tees. Also, Garbro's book. Go have a look. Check out the link to Kofi. Thank you for watching our videos and giving our channel a hand. But this is the end, our viewers and friends. So let's get back to the video, man. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> I used to play 40k with Edward Snowden. He was what we called, back in the day, Beardy. Someone who made real cheese lists and interpreted rules in his favour. Somehow I can see that being a thing. Yeah. One day we were having a mega battle at my house and Eddie decided to bring a dark angel list with at least 20 plasma cannons in it. First turn, he shoots them all at another guy's wraith lord. At the time, one of the toughest models in the game. And kills it before it can even act. The guy flips out and screams, Why does everyone always fucking kill my wraith lord? <laughs> <laughs> I know that exact feeling. Why is it any time you paint something really nice, you've got a really come like a new model? It's only you, on the table and it's like, oh, that's be, well, that's being fucking destroyed, isn't it? That's because you sit and talk to them and it's like, oh yeah, I can do this and I can do that. It's actually like, really well, cool. I'm fucking going for that. Oh, well, that's getting fucking knocked off the table first round. <laughs> 
He proceeds to pick it up and hurl it full force <laughs> at Eddie. He dodges it and smashes it against the wall. Eddie laughs his ass off and calls the guy a fag, and the guy storms out. Ed Snowden. What a guy. <laughs> I'm going to say this is fake, but I want... I, I want it to be real so bad. <laughs> you know you know who actually played a lot of 40k? Or actually, it wasn't 40k. I think he played mostly fantasy. Was um, Robin Williams. Yeah. Apparently, he, he was did. really big into it. I would love to play again. Like, imagine playing against him and playing works. Oh. I'd, I'd be like, 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 do the voices. Do it, please. Do go on, it. go on, do the voices for me. Oh, go I on, Robin. That. You can do it for me. Oh, it is true. He says it is true and on, pick related. This is my crew ready to go to Games Day 2001, Snowden on the left. Oh, sweet Jesus. Why does this look like a cursed image as well? <laughs> <laughs> it does look like slightly cursed. It does look slightly cursed. But that do- that does look like Snowden to me. It, I just need to look up. I haven't seen a picture of Snowden in a while. All right, hold on one sec. Oh, no, it is him. 100%. Yeah, it's, that's definitely Snowden to me. Yeah, no, the ears and everything. The eye shape. Basically, I went to buy some dice since I was in the city and had free time. Saw a grown-ass man cry over three booster boxes. The premium ones that have a lot of shit. Apparently he didn't get the super rare card of the pack. But the guy was almost screaming. Like if he saw his wife in a car crash and she died and she revealed to him that she was pregnant so he loses his wife and son. That kind of scream and tears. I decided to go to the store in the next block. <laughs> yes. Like, like people, people have been complaining about the boxes for a while, but we've been living with the boxes for what, like the past 20 years now? Remember them lucky dip bags? Yeah, that's that's what I call a fucking dip box back in the day. <laughs> yeah, lucky that's ex- dip bag. That's exactly what a fucking is. My local game store had some kind of rivalry between the older Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! Neckbeard that produced some cringe. Produced? The fuck is produced? Fuck it, that's staying in the video. Let's keep going. <laughs> Day of Yu-Gi-Oh! Tournament. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tables moved to both floors of the store. Magic the Gathering players playing in a corner of the first floor. The girlfriend of one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! players is half cods playing Magician Girl. <laughs> okay. Why is that funny? About an hour in, two rival neckbeards start screaming at each other. Can't make shit out of most of what they're saying. My card game better. <laughs> or some My card. <laughs> Everyone starts laughing. Store worker tries to stop the verbal sumo wrestling. <laughs> the Yu-Gi-Oh neckbeard finishes screaming something in the lines of, "We even have a cute girl to look at anytime we want." Silence.mp3. All store cringing. Everyone got back to their chairs. The girl's bo- boyfriend finishes playing and both leave. Only the boyfriend shows up afterwards. <laughs> And just to buy boosters, then leaves. Also very cringe reactions when getting good cards on boosters or when winning games. I really didn't like that place. <laughs> I mean, what do you really say about that? Like, I'm sorry to say, but um, am I going to say it? Well, Girls and game stories don't mix. Yeah, no, they don't. There's a lot of awkward tension in the air. A lot. That's why I normally brought alcohol with <laughs> Yeah. Me. What was the worst one you ever had? I don't want to say, because probably my, people from the game store might watch this, so <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> All right, okay, we, we, we won't say nothing then. We won't say nothing. Yeah. Local game store, which does cards, minis, board games, and old school video, has a day every few months where they discount Games Workshop sprays to 12 bucks, which actually makes them kind of worth buying as primers. I think it's a way to get people to come in during the pandemic, since they never closed, just no using the tables. So I'm standing in line with my Chaos Blacks and Grey Sears, while well, these two teenage meth heads are trying to get the employee to take a bunch of still wrapped shovelware games that these assholes clearly lifted from a Walmart <laughs> bargain bin or something in exchange for cash. Obviously he says no, but they try to barter with him for like 15 minutes before he finally asks them to leave the store. Like a week later, I'm in there for that Bug Manson Overlord mini because it's like five bucks cheaper than online. And the same two fucks are at the dice counter trying to do the same shit with the DSi. Honestly, why are, why are meth heads the most enjoyable people? <laughs> to I, watch. I absolutely love drug addicts. <laughs> like, drug addicts are my type of people. <laughs> like, they're just interesting guys, a lot of them. Okay, of course, you keep them at arm's length. You know, you never don't get trust them. You don't trust them. You, they, you never let them know where you live or anything like that. But they are entertaining. I will not have it said any other way because they are fucking comic gold. <laughs> the rule is you have to leave the console with the store while they playtest it. And then come back and get your money for cash, trade in, 
But come to find out, one of the meth things stole the DSi from his little brother, so the whole thing fell through. Great store, except the meth heads. <laughs> I don't know, meth heads are character. I, you know what I want to imagine these meth heads to be like? I imagine them as like a more scummy, white trash version of Jen Silent Bob. Yeah. At game, cafe, slash bar. Lads are having an attorney. I got eliminated early, so I headed to the bar to get drinks. Waiting for a beer, a chubby young woman comes up to see me, asks what I've been playing. I tell her Mordheim. She responds enthusiastic. Start talking about Drop Zone Commander. We have a big yak about tactics and merits and feelings of various war games. All in all, a very pleasant experience. Wish her a good day and go back to hanging out with the lads. <laughs> okay, my friendly local game store was actually pretty okay. I still like gaming at home better though. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. A normal okay. a normal that's a normal, normal. interaction. That's yeah. that, that's 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 quite refreshing if I be honest with you guys. Beast? Yeah, pretty beast, not gonna lie. Got a few from working at one. Worked at a small card shop, not really even being paid. Owner was a friend so was helping out for a shift or two a week. Got some boxes of Magic the Gathering cards and minis out of the deal, so it was not bad. Anyways, ended up being one of the main dungeon masters at the store. Mostly kept to the D&D games. One day we get a new player, John. John was as spurgy as you get. Neckbeard, long hair, anime shirts, obese and loud. He killed four groups by non-stop talking about anime and doing cringe shit. Man comes in with like two Wendy meals and scarfs it down at the store. Don't call me out like that, guys, okay? <laughs> Don't call me out. Listen to one of the games he was in since I wasn't DM for that one. Character's name is Nyx Shadowblade or some shit. Constantly talks about his character's backstory. His parents were killed in front of him and his sister raped and shit. Eventually asked to see his character sheet after the game. Every single one had the word rape in it. Poker faced. I, and they give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would even. I, I don't even think I would pick anything up. I would be like, okay, here you go. Not to worry. Months later, become a regular. Oh shit! Still up to his edge, but kinda has a grip. Shifts changed due to school, so clerk for that group nights on Mondays. Slow as fuck day, so would listen in. John asked to try DMing. They reluctantly say yes to be nice. Two weeks later, he runs his game. Weird, modern, fantasy, anime cliche. People have smartphones. Party consists of the few of a group, as the agreement was made to run this when a few of them were on vacation. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they got lucky. They, got they lucky. knew exactly what they were doing. Store owner dropped by and knows of John's spurginess, but a chill dude and joins the game. John starts kinda okay-ish, no real details. NPCs were just generic anime tropes, and eventually the party goes into a tavern where John, with some graphic detail, explains how a succubus <laughs> rapes them. Luckily no kids were there that day. Think he got a verbal warming and a temporary ban on DMing. Temporary. <laughs> okay. Not temporary, that was a mistake and a half. <laughs> Look, did anyone expect anything different? I know. Like, you know, the thing is, you already know what he's kind of like. You kind of get a feel for him. You knew where this was going to go. You've only got yourself to blame, if yeah. I'm being honest with you. You should have just booked yourself a holiday in the space of like three <laughs> days and got out of the fucking country to avoid John, and that would have been the only way to deal with it. <laughs> yes. Apart from actually just sitting down and saying to him, um, by, no, the way, um, by the way, yeah, um, no, please don't DM. Um, <laughs> actually, you know what? I've got this great new module that just came out. Do you want to try this one instead? Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I know. Try something, guys. This one time, at my local game store, James from Neckbeardy is shit his pants and then posted a thread asking about the best local game store stories <laughs> on TG. Shit, how does he know? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! You find out my secrets! <laughs> so yeah, I think that's where we're going to end it. Um, the problem is, we can't really tell you our ones because... I don't know if people watch this or not. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get find out, so we can't actually tell you yeah. any of our ones, otherwise we would. Will we? No. No, no, we're not, no. not going to tell. I mean, even then, they're not even that good. No, like, if they're I be not honest even with that you, good. They're not even that cringy, but if you have got cringy stories, like, you know, who do you know that knows your fucking YouTube account? Let's be serious. Yes, You can, you can spell know. all the beans. You can spell all the beans. Although, actually, come to think of it, someone did do a post about, uh, this was a, a thread from a while back, it was actually a confessions thread, and they saw that we had read one of their comments, and they've actually sent us a short story. So we might do that tomorrow. It's only like it's only like a seven minute long story. So yeah. look, we might do that tomorrow just to 
you know, I, I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, but if you have your own story, let us know down below. And while you're down there, check out the links to the website, check out the models, the t-shirts, the subclasses, all that good shit. Hit subscribe and hit no- Ugh, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. Fucking stroke. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>